Do you know a guy who talked to a kangaroo? Hi there. <laughs> who's always ready to learn about something new? Wow. Whose favorite book has all the animals you could wish? Yeah. Who's proud to say his best friend is a fish? That's right, it's my man Stanley. Oh yeah, it's my man Stanley. Welcome to Stanley's world. Stanley. Come help him figure out what life is all about. You're swimming with dolphins. Oh, yeah. Laughs with the lions, too. No problems that can solve. It's all that it involves. Having a friend like you. Having a friend like you. kickball from Stanley? Um, I didn't know anybody was playing with it. That's not true. You knew we were playing kickball and you wouldn't give it back. And did you call Lester names? No. Ben, what you did was bad enough, but please don't lie to me. Now, apologize to Stanley and Lester. Sorry. It isn't the shrimp and the big mouth tattletale. Don't bother us, okay? Just want to go home. Huh? Well, maybe I don't want to let you. Please, Bill? Why should I? You got me in trouble with the teacher. Nice cat. Give it back! Hey! Oh, go! I think I'll wear it a while. Bye bye Hey, wait! You can't do that! Come on, Stanley. Let's get out of here. So what do we do about Ben? I'd recommend you talk to Miss Diaz again when you get to school tomorrow. I will, Venice. But that won't stop Ben from bothering us when she's not around. Maybe I could get my parents to move us to another state. Well, I don't think that's the most practical solution, Lester. But I do think there's a lot you two can do to protect yourselves from Ben. How? Ben's bigger and tougher than we are. Not if the two of you stick up for each other. I know two animal friends who are able to protect each other from predators much bigger than both of them. What's a predator again? A predator is an animal that hunts other animals. That's right, Stanley. So who are these animals that protect each other? The clownfish and the sea anemone. Let's look at our map. The clownfish is a little fish that lives in the Indo-Pacific Ocean, where there are also anemones. Hey, that's near Australia. Right you are, Stanley. There are some bigger fish there that would like to eat the clownfish, but the anemone won't let them. Wow, this anemone must be a pretty big fish if it can protect the clownfish. I bet it's got really, really sharp teeth. Why don't we go see for ourselves? Yeah, in the great big... Look at everything. everything! It's the great big book of everything with everything inside. See the world around us, this book's the perfect guide. I wish they'd make like that plant and leave. Getting big time is no fun, but two fish are stronger than one. 
Let's see. Anemone starts with A. So, here we are. Wow! Look at that! Are we ready to take the plunge? Five, Five four, four, three, two, one! two, one! Into, Into the book to have, have some fun! fun. Whee! Aha! I see the anemones. Where? Right here. But I thought the anemone was a big fish with really sharp teeth. This looks like a plant. It does look a bit like a plant, but it's actually an animal. It's related to these coral. Oh, and also to that jellyfish. That must be the clownfish. Well, the clownfish is never far from its anemone. They are symbiotic. Symbiotic? What does that mean again? It means they live together, help each other, and protect each other. That's so cool! They're friends! Can you guess how the clownfish got its name? Hmm. <laughs> Is it because they started the first underwater circus? <laughs> no. Try again. Maybe we need to get a closer look. Let's use my stanoscope. Oh, I know now! Its colors are so bright! It's like a clown suit. <laughs> That's right! It looks like the clownfish is hiding inside the anemone. Yes, indeed, it is. The clownfish thinks we're predators, so it's staying inside the anemone where it's safe. But I don't get it. How can the anemone protect it? It can't even go anywhere. Well, you see the anemone's tentacles? These long, wavy things? Precisely. The anemone's tentacles contain many stingers, which can paralyze the clownfish's predators. Wow. I can see how the anemone protects the clownfish. It keeps it safe from the predators that hunt it. But how does the clownfish help the anemone? Let's see what happens to the anemone when the clownfish isn't around. That's a butterfly fish, one of the anemone's predators. Hey! Why isn't the anemone stinging it with its paralyzing death ray thingy? The butterfly fish has a pointed mouth and long, bristly teeth that it can use to scrape away the stingers. Poor anemone. And poor clownfish! What's gonna happen when he comes back and finds his friend all eaten up? I don't think the clownfish is gonna let that happen. Hey, he's defending the anemone. That butterfly fish doesn't look so tough now. Yay! You see? The anemone and the clownfish defended each other. They make a great team standing up to bullies. Hey, maybe you and I can do the same thing. So, how are we going to stand up to bed? Let's get some stinging tentacles and tie up to our arms. Okay, maybe not. Anybody else have any bright ideas? We can practice running till we're really, really fast and can get away from Ben whenever we see him. Yes, but that would just let Ben know you're scared. One thing you can do is not act scared. If Ben sees he's not getting to you, it won't be as much fun for him to bully you. I can act not scared. Watch this. Uh, well, we'll work on that. <laughs> And the other thing you can do is stand up for each other, like the anemone and the clownfish. If Ben picks on one of you, the other should come to his defense. I've got your back, Stanley. And I've got yours, Lester. <laughs> hey, this is my side of the street. I didn't say you could walk here. We can walk anywhere we want. You don't own this sidewalk. Yeah, this isn't Ben Street. It is if I say so, shrimp. Lester's not a shrimp. He's an anemone. Yeah! What? You heard me. And I'm a clownfish. Yeah! Whatever. Like my new cap? Normally I'm not into worms, but I like this one. 
Really? You don't like worms? What about the one behind you? Ah! A worm? You help! Ah! Ah! Calm down, Ben. There isn't really a worm. Lester was just kidding. Oh. I guess you think I'm a big crybaby now, right? No, not really. A lot of people are scared of worms, but it's only because they don't know anything about them. I used to be scared of macaroni! And I used to be scared of you, Ben. But then Lester and I learned about the clownfish and the anemone and how to stand up for each other. Yeah! Maybe we couldn't stand up to you alone. But together, we make a great team. We're symbiotic! Wow, you sure know a lot. Are you guys, like, intellectuals or something? Nah, we're just really smart. That's really cool. Think you can teach me some of that stuff? I'm glad you got your cat back. Did you have fun playing with Ben? Yeah, he's okay when you get to know him. Not as tough as you thought, eh? Nope. You don't need stinging tentacles like the anemone. But you do need a pal you can count on, like Lester. I guess we're sim... Sim... Symbi... Symbiotic. Right, like the anemone and the clownfish. We help each other out. You sure do. <sighs> Good night, clownfish Stanley. Good night, goldfish Dennis. Elsie, do you think we're symbiotic? We'd be a lot more symbiotic if you stopped waking me up. At the zoo. Here we are. The grand opening of the great big zoo of everything. And it only took eight years, six months, and five days to build. But who's counting? Thanks for taking us here, Mr. Goldberg. I heard the zoo has animals from all over the world. I'd say the new zoo loves animals as much as Stanley does. Which exhibit should we see first, kids? Exhibit? What kind of animal is that? It's not an animal, Lester. It's where the animals hang out in the zoo. Right, a Rooney. Like the Lion Plains of Africa, or the Penguin Palace. Whoa, so many animals. Where do we start? Hey, let's open the great big book of everything. Whatever page it lands on, that's the animal we'll see first. Good idea. Here goes. Mandrels? Cool, I've never seen them before. Mandrels? The colorful monkeys from the West African Congo? Fantabulous! They're right here in the zoo's mandrel menagerie. Look, Dennis, the zoo built the mandrels their own house. So they did. Let's pay them a visit. It's rather steamy in here. I'm having a bad fin day. It's too hot. Yeah. Oh, look! Mandrills! Ew! What's he eating? That looks gross! I bet he'd like my popcorn more! Huh. Some kind of force field in here. No, it's a big glass wall. It keeps the mandrills safe on their side of the exhibit. Well, there's got to be some way to get them some popcorn. Uh, what you doing down there, son? Uh, trying to feed the mandrels? You're not supposed to feed the animals, Lester. The zookeepers handle that. So we can't get in there, and he can't come out here? I believe not, Stanley. But what if he wants to go outside? He can't get to the door. What makes you think he'd want to leave the exhibit? Too hot and sticky in here. What a leave. Yeah. It's not fair. Why does the zoo keep the mandrels in that yucky exhibit? Yeah, it's too hot. They can't even get any popcorn. They're trapped. Let's 
Let's free them, Astro! Free them? Hold on a minute now. Yeah, Lester. We can't just free them. First, we need to deactivate all the security cameras. Stanley, no! But Dennis, they should be able to go wherever they want. Yeah, they could hang out with the other animals or get a soda at the cafe. Are you sure they'd want to do those things? Perhaps we should all learn a bit more about mandrills. I agree. Me too! It's the great big book of everything with everything inside. What? See the world around us. This book's a perfect guide. <laughs> Perhaps you two would like to live in an exhibit. Should we set the mandrels free and find out where they'd like to be? Guess we've done our job. Yeah, race you back home. Whoa! Who do you think's gonna win? Oh, silly, silly Lester. Okay. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M. M for mandrills. Ah, mandrills. One of the most colourful monkeys in the world. Especially the males. With their blue striped cheeks and bright red noses. I bet he wants to come outside. OK. Come on out. Stanley, wait. Now that's a happy mandrill. He's smiling. Uh, actually, Stanley, mandrills smile to show off their sharp teeth when they're scared. Scared? What's he scared of? It's nice out here. Yes, but it's also rather busy. This may not be the best place for a mandrill. Oh, no! He's getting away! Uh-oh. Here we go again. Want to check out the lion exhibit? I hear it's the king of them all. What about, about the mandrill? Oh, we've already seen that one. Come on, boys. There are a lot of other things to see. Wonderific! That's one for the scrapbook. Lester, we can't stay here. We've got to find the mandrill. He's loose in the zoo. I know, Stanley, but maybe he's having fun. You know, hanging out with other animals. Yeah, uh, Stanley, he's probably having a blast. Uh, uh, Stanley? But I still wish we knew where he was. I can help you with that. He's right over there. Aw, he's playing with the lion cub. Playing? Are you sure he's having a good time? Maybe we'd better check. Let's get a closer look. Do you think the mandrill looks like he's having a good time? No, he's smiling. <laughs> that means he's scared. He's not playing. He's being chased. <laughs> he's heading for another exhibit. We've got to help him. Come on, Dad! Well, where are we going? Please, no more running. I'm no spring chicken. And don't get any funny ideas about dragging me to the chicken exhibit either. Gotta rest now. Look, the mandrel. I never should have brought him out of the book. He's miserable. And he keeps jumping in and out of all the exhibits. What's up with that? Well, I don't think he's felt comfortable in any of them, Lester. And now he's freezing in the polar bear exhibit. We've got to get him back in the book where he belongs. But how are we going to get him out of there? Perhaps we should learn about what he does like. Yeah, in the great big book of everything. Nah. Come on. Five, four, three, two, one. Great big book, here we come. Where are we, Dennis? The steamy rainforest of central West Africa, where mandrills come from. Look, here they are now. They're not smiling. They must be happy. Right, because they're safe and sound in the home they love. They like to sleep in trees and eat the fruits, vegetables and bugs found in the rainforest. This really is the best place for them to be. 
It sure is hot and sticky here. Kind of like the Zoo's Mandrel Exhibit. That's right. Their exhibit is set up just like the tropical rainforest. So that's why it had so many plants and trees. Yeah, and I bet all that hot air makes the mandrels feel right at home. Indeed it does. And the food they were eating is very much like the food they find in the rainforest. Oh, that's why I shouldn't feed them popcorn. It's not what they eat at home. Exactly. In fact, all of the zoo's animal exhibits are designed to be just like the animals' homes. The exhibits provide the animals with what they need to be happy. The African plains are too hot for a polar bear and the Arctic is too cold for a lion. The animals are happiest in exhibits set up like home because home has everything they need. Just like my home is everything I need. A big comfy sofa, Mom, Dad and Lionel, and the best pets in the world. So the mandras at the zoo like being in their exhibit, Dennis? I imagine so. It's the next best thing to home. And in their case, it may soon be their only home. Mandrills are in danger of losing their homes because people have been destroying the rainforest for years. That's terrible. Thankfully, many zoos give animals like mandrills a new place to call home. Wow, they really look happy here. That's because they're safe now and have what they need. Trees and plants and... That's it. I know what to do. We need to make him feel at home. Look over here, Mr. Mandrill. It's home. Now that's a happy mandrill. Yep, he finally has what he needs. Well, I got my second wind. Should we go back to running? No, thanks, Dad. We can walk. In that case, next stop, Penguin Palace. I had a great time at the zoo today, Dennis. So did I. And we learned a great many things. Yep. Like not to set the animals loose. <laughs> Quite right, Stanley. Because the zoo gives the animals the homes they need. Like the mandrel exhibit. It's hot and steamy and full of trees. Just like the rainforest they come from. And since the real rainforest is in trouble, the mandrels can be happy and safe at the zoo for now. Yeah, they have a great home. Just like Harry, Elsie and I have a great home here with you. You give us everything we need. <sighs> like fresh water for my bowl and earmuffs to drown out their snoring. <laughs> good night, Dennis. Oh, I'm sorry, Stanley. Uh, what was that? Uh, I can't hear you. I said good night. Hmm? Beg pardon, Stanley. Uh, come again? I said good night. Uh, did you say something? <laughs> <laughs>